Let's continue with our circuit analogy. I like this. Electricity jokes. Shocking. So we're going to have now introducing something called chairs. So, I mean, chairs aren't that complicated, but chairs are going to represent resistors in our analogy here. Okay, so one chair is a resistor. So I've just drawn a chair, for example, here. Well, in real life, that's going to be a resistor. That means we're going to have some value R we write to it. And it's going to be important to know this. So we're going to actually write this down. So we're going to say resistance. That's going to be this letter R. Now, it's got a funny unit. It's actually use units called ohms. That's what these here are called, O-H-M-S. That's the units, named after a guy named Ohm. But this is actually going to be important here just to know we have this quantity called resistance. So each chair is going to represent a resistor. And if you have a taller chair, for example, it costs you more chocolate, well, that means um, a greater resistance, for example, uses more potential. And remember what potential is. Potential, that's sort of, those are your volts here. So in other words, resistors, you know, they, they cost you potential. So what this really means is that in this analogy, if you imagine then, so you came in here, the battery, let's say it's a one volt battery. In other words, every student who passes through here, they gain one piece of chocolate you know, in this analogy. So that means if I'm a student, I came by here, oop, I'm empty, I gain one piece of chocolate, hooray! Well, what does this mean is that I need to eat it right here. So in order to cross the resistor, that's where I would eat my one piece of chocolate. I would mainly eat it here. That's the analogy piece that's going to help us. So just to be clear then, we've got a few variables in the circuit, don't we? We have something called a uh, current. So we're going to say I, which is the current, Okay, and what's that measured in? That's measured in amperes. We have an equation for it, don't we? We have this in our data booklet. It just goes I equals delta Q over delta T. Yay, okay. Then what else do we have? Well, we have V, which is the potential difference. That's measured in volts. And we have this equation for it. It goes V equals W over Q. I mean, in other words, remember this is energy over charge. Um, and finally, we have R, which is equal to resistance. And if you understand these, these are like your three main quantities. So when you're considering a circuit, just think about these three quantities. What's I, what's V, what's R, and then away you go. So I want to consider now a type of circuit called a series circuit. And a series circuit is like this here. So I'll draw just regular circuit diagrams here. This is the battery, and the conventional current is going to go this way. Okay, it's going to pass through here. It's called series because the resistors are one after the other. Do you notice if you go around, like you pass through that one, you pass through that one, and away you go. Okay, so what are we going to have here? I need to imagine myself some detectors. So, for example, maybe I put an ammeter right here, for example. So I'll just imagine myself a little ammeter here, A here. And what is that ammeter actually measuring? Well, that ammeter is going to be measuring the current, yes, but it's going to be what we call the total current at the battery. Okay, so that's how we're going to define this ammeter here. It's going to tell us I, so to speak, this current. So that's going to be this battery current. Now, you have to imagine, though, I could put in a bunch of other ammeters. Can you see, like, I could put an ammeter right beside this resistor, R2, and that would measure I2, the current right beside that resistor. Or I could imagine, uh, can you imagine that I've got another ammeter sitting right here, maybe, right there beside R1? That would measure the current I1. So this is important to consider what's at the battery or the whole circuit and what's right beside a different device. Because I'm not going to draw a zillion ammeters, but I'm going to imagine a bunch, if that makes any sense. Same with the voltmeter. So if I'm considering a voltmeter right here, that'll be this V right here like this. And I would have that voltmeter connected in parallel like this right here. Okay, so that voltmeter, well, it measures PD. Remember, uh, potential difference. In other words, it's counting volts. You know, when you come in, you've got zero. When you leave, you've got some. And that's going to measure this V, what we're going to call capital V here. This is going to be these values right here. So in other words, this right here is at the battery, what we call. You know, this is the, you know, at the battery here. Or sometimes we can call it at the terminal or something like that. But I think, you know, this is actually nice to call this right here the battery. Now what's interesting again is just like we were using, you know, for the ammeter, remember I said to imagine a bunch of ammeters, that maybe here I'll actually uh, put one here. So I'll put like a voltmeter here, but this one will measure V1 here. So in other words, if I connected a voltmeter here, I'd be measuring, you know, a difference in potential across R1. Or if I had another one, for example, right here, 
example, that could be V2, and that would measure the potential difference across R2 here, this resistor. Okay, so we've got a couple other things right here. We've got something called a total equivalent resistance. And this, uh, actually, all three of these equations are actually found in your data booklet, which is good. But it just says this. This one right here, remember, it's, uh, it's called the total equivalent resistance. So what happens with that is it just goes R1 plus R2 plus dot, 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 in case you've got more. So can you imagine then if I've got like, you know, five different resistors, you know, R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, I just add them all up. I add the values of the resistance. So what do we mean by this? Well, that's why we write, by the way, RS, S for series. And this is the total equivalent resistance. And actually, I'll put this exam tip right away already here. So that means for a series circuit, if you have something like this, well, then if you could imagine this total equivalent resistance, in other words, the circuit is going to act as if there was just one resistor. So I could actually redraw this whole thing with just one single resistor, of course, of resistance value RS. In other words, if this is like a one ohm resistor, this is a one ohm resistor, it'd be the same as if there was a single single 2 ohm resistor here and so on so you just use this equation here so this basically this kind of that leads to this stuff right here okay what about the currents well the good news is if you imagine actually this circuit analogy it should make sense we're basically uh, deriving Kirchhoff's laws here you don't really need to do those anymore in the syllabus but because these are given in the data booklet which is good but let's consider them if I'm counting students per second can you imagine if this is like a um, one volt battery can we just imagine that so that means everybody who passes by here gets one piece of chocolate if I'm measuring the people per second, in other words, the students per second here, imagine that compared to if I'm measuring it right beside R2 here. In other words, I'm, mentioning, I'm measuring I2. Or here I'm measuring I1, maybe right beside this one. Is there going to be any difference in the students per second around this main circuit? No. So in other words, I can say that total circuit, you know, circuit current here, this one right beside the battery, is going to be the same thing as I1, which is going to be the same thing as I2, which is going to be the same thing as dot, dot, dot. In other words, if I have a bunch of other ones, okay, again, if everything is in series, there's not going to be a difference. It's going to be just like this. And at the battery, you're also told this. In other words, if I have my voltmeter here at the battery, if I'm measuring, remember, everybody comes in here and gains uh, one piece of chocolate. So you come in here with zero pieces of chocolate. You leave with uh, one piece of chocolate. So I'm measuring a difference of one. Well, what happens compared to here? Do you imagine then if I pass through here, what happens? And I have to eat some of my chocolate here, and I have to eat some of it here. And you're only given one piece of chocolate, and I tell you that these two resistors are the same. Does it make sense that you'd probably eat half and then half? But what if I told you, ooh, this one right here is actually a bigger resistance. Well, maybe you eat more. Maybe you eat like 0.7 of a piece of chocolate, and here maybe you eat 0.3. So do you see there's something to do with this one plus this one having to add up to that one? Those potential differences at least. So that's what we're going to write. We're going to say V1 plus V2 plus dot 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 in case there's other ones. And these are your three main equations for series circuits. And these are all on your data booklet. Can you imagine now that I'm placing a bunch of resistors in parallel? So what does that mean? This right here, by the way, is just one resistor like this. If I put them in series, they'd be one after the other. But here, what I'm going to do is like this. Look, I give a choice. So in other words, the coulombs of charge, these students can go two different places. Now, I would ask the students to actually get connected this way. So normally in my own class, I would say, all right, students, you figure out how to do this. They'd put a chair here, they'd put a chair here. And I'd tell them, you, you figure out how to orient yourselves like this. And the important thing then is considering a voltmeter, for example. So if I've got a voltmeter right here, it's measuring the uh, entire uh, circuit voltage here, a circuit potential difference. Imagine then I had a little one right here that was placed, for example, right across here, for example. Imagine I had one that was here, for example. So just imagining these little detectors. The main circuit is still in black here. And I could also have a bunch of uh, ammeters as well. Well, first of all, if we want to find the total equivalent resistance, that's what this right here is, okay? Again, this is the total equivalent resistance. It is so important, you know, it's 1 over RP. It's not just RP. That's where people make so many mistakes, okay? But it's going to be 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus dot, dot, dot. So keep that in mind that it's 
what you're finding. In other words, if you do like one over, let's say this is like a one ohm resistor, this is a two ohm resistor. If you do one over one plus one over two, and you know you figure out that answer, that's not what the parallel resistance is. That's one over the parallel resistance. In other words, you have to then flip this and flip the whole thing over here to get RP by itself. Just watch out for that. Now, uh, again, like before with this uh, resistance um, in parallel, what happens then is, you know, this total equivalent resistance, that means that you could actually redraw it then as just one resistor. So in other words, you could just redraw it like this. But of course, that resistor would have a resistance RP, you know, whatever you just found. This parallel, that's what P stands for, is parallel. All right, let's consider the current and the potential differences. Maybe we'll do the potential difference first. Let's consider that. So I have my voltmeter here. It's measuring, let's say, one piece of chocolate here. So imagine you're a student here, and this is really, really important you understand this. So if you're a student in this right here, you're coming in here, you've got zero pieces of chocolate, and the battery gives you one piece of chocolate. Hooray! So this is measuring one volt here. Now if I'm just one coulomb of charge, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to go this way, sure, but I'm probably going to then have to choose. Do I either go this way and back to the battery, or do I go all the way around and back to the battery? Most students, when I ask them, you know, in the class how to do this, they usually say, oh, maybe the first student maybe goes here. Maybe then the next student, maybe they go over here. But if you imagine you are one single coulomb of charge, what will you do? This is how I solve circuits. This is why I use this analogy in the first place. So if I'm a piece of, uh, or I'm a student, and I've got one piece of chocolate here that I've just gained, and I decide to go over here, over here, and back, how much am I eating here at R1? I'm going to eat my whole piece of chocolate, one, because I only pass through one resistor. So that means it's going to be V1 equals V, uh, sorry, V equals V1. Sure. But then what about if I'm a different one? What if I'm the student who decided to pass through this one instead? Do you notice if that's just my circuit? Well, if I'm doing just this, I might... I'm also just eating one. Do you see that? I'm just passing through R2. That means I'm just going to eat one volt here as well because I gain one volt at the battery and I only pass through a single resistor here. So that means it must be equal to V2. So in other words, these all have to be the same. And the currents, how do they go? Turns out if you imagine a little ammeter right here uh, by the battery, that's going to measure the current, you know, at the whole uh, right here at, at the battery. So I imagine I'm measuring like, you know, five students per second or something like that here. Well, does it make sense that if I placed it right in here, like right beside R1, for example, over here, am I measuring all the students here? No, only half the students are passing through here. Does that make sense? And the other half are passing through here, and a half plus a half equals one. In other words, this is the one where these numbers are here then at. And if you notice, these equations then, they kind of look like each other from series and parallel. The only difference between the current and the potential difference ones is these are pluses, these are equal, whereas in series, these are equal, these are added. So that's actually really important to know. That this is actually also on your data booklet, which is good. So does that mean you have to memorize these? Nope, you have all three of these. And now we can put it all together by considering entire circuits. But if you understood this, if you followed what we've been talking about, you actually have everything we need. This is how I can solve pretty much every circuit question.